right, we're going to try this again. <laughs> we tried this last Monday and uh, had a kind of my uh, power got shut off. So I wasn't able to come back on. And uh, so we're going to try again this week. <laughs> Let's see how that goes. All right. Hey, what's up, Neil? Glad to see you. I hope this thing's working okay. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to start over, I guess. <laughs> oh, my goodness. How are you doing, Neil? Hey, Mortar. All right. I'm just going to kind of try and work a little bit faster today just to try and catch up. So what I was trying to explain last week was um, I, I got solar panels on my roof <laughs> and they have to turn, they have to put a, um, they have to put a new meter on my power meter that reads incoming and outgoing. Since I'm gonna be generating power, the local power company will buy it back from me. So not only am I buying it, but I'm also selling it um, when I'm producing too much. So they had to put a different meter on there. And they decided to do it right midstream last week. <laughs> I'm doing good, Neil, thanks. Okay. So um, again, I'm modeling a, a character that is off screen. Thanks, Neil. Um, yeah, he's off screen right now um, because I thought it would be fun to do, to make it so you guys couldn't see what I'm modeling. So it'll be a surprise. <laughs> hey, Tara, how's it going? Okay. But if you've watched any of the other streamers, you can probably guess what I'm gonna be sculpting. Because we're doing kind of a theme again where everybody's sculpting their version of the same thing. Okay. So this will be interesting. <laughs> Maybe. Hey, Afori, how's, how's it going? I don't even know the story behind Krampus, really. I know he's like a European fictional character that is kind of opposite of the, the whole gift giving. I think he's the gift taker or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Craig, you're right. I'm doing a head. <laughs> Spent a lot of time today watching the sirloin of beef videos for, I keep forgetting about them. Yeah, I need, I need to make them a little more front and center in the, in the course. So. Okay. Speaking of which, um, if you're not in the course yet, here, hold on a second. I need to snap this better. There we go. And boom. Okay. Um, I'm going, I am, a lot of people have been asking if I'm going to be doing a Black Friday sale again this year on the course, and um, I, I am going to be. So, if you are not in the course and you've been waiting and you want to get in there, uh, this this coming week is uh, I'm going to be having another another deep discount. Okay, let's split these eyes off. I don't know why. It, sometimes it hides them. Sometimes not. <laughs>
bring that in a little bit. It's like a mystery. Mystery what, what I'm modeling a little bit. Male head, sure. <laughs> okay. When I start adding these other pieces, you'll kind of start to see what it's going to look like. <laughs> Queen's Gambit. You know, there have been some really good Queen's Gambit characters that have been made, and they're out there. Um, I love that show. If you guys haven't seen that show yet on Netflix, um, it's very, very well done. Okay. Yeah, Voldemort with, without a nose. How did you come up with your workflow? Um, well, what I did was um, there's there's an old Disney animator. His name's Preston Blair, and he used to do these how to draw series. And he would um, he would draw his characters with large primitive shapes. And I used to work on I used to work at Disney interactive on disney infinity i worked there for about 10 years and towards the end of disney infinity see i had slowly transitioned over from box modeling like traditional modeling i used to model in maya for the most part and then we we when we started making toys we started to use zbrush and then um, i would treat zbrush like i treated maya i would model things in the same way for most of the time and then towards the end i'm like i wonder if this method would work i wonder if 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 I blocked out um, the, everything with primitive shapes, if it would work. And uh, it just so happened that it worked well. So I'm, I couldn't be happier with it. <laughs> it's a great question though. Thank you for asking. So I'm basically modeling out the interior of the ear and I'm gonna push it in. Maybe I'll use the inflate and reverse inflate it in, or even this cloth brush. So I, I want it to fold over, fold over. I can't talk today. Wonder if you still have some of the old Disney Infinity sculpts? Yes, I do, I have them all. Um, what's the oldest sculpt you still have a hold of? Um, the oldest? Well, I think the first character, it wasn't made by me. It was made by um, my good friend, Brad Bolander. We started with, um, we started with Mr. Incredible. So Bob, we'd call him Bob. So that's his, that's his name on the show, Bob. <laughs> and uh, I think that was the first character we made for Disney Infinity to, to get, to try and get the look down. Hey, how's it going? I'm doing well, Andrew. Thank you. How are you? I want to turn this ear over more. Yeah, it kind of looks like Yoda for a second, huh? Okay. I did do a, a, a child. What's it called? The child. I did do one of those during one of my live streams back in the day, but this is, this is not Yoda. <laughs> have to see how this works here I like the guessing that's going on though that's fun oh boy let's reset this got a very pointy nose this guy ah you're welcome yep
<laughs> kind of looks like an orc, doesn't it? Kind of goblinish. Okay, I think I'm going to um, get right into doing uh, dynamic topology, which is Sculptress Pro. Um, not a goblin, but similar. Oh, there's the, <laughs> the baby Yoda. Thanks, Neil. Okay, let's see. Um, apply the dynamic subdivs. Let's duplicate this. And apply the subdivision surfaces so it looks like this. And then we'll stitch it together. Remesh by union. Boink. All right. Accept. Turn symmetry back on. All right. So now he's all stitched together. Then we can start doing... Uh, doing uh, dynamic topology. So is it important to draw, use a drawing tablet, especially for a 3D artist? Um, it is, in my opinion, it's it's pretty important to have um, subdiv or I was gonna say subdivision levels. It's important to have uh, sensitivity levels. So um, I think I get this question asked every single stream, which is fine, but um, the, a mouse is either, when you're using the button, it's either 0% or 100%. You don't get anything in between. So you can't do a nice, soft, subtle curve or an edge uh, because you have a mouse and it's either on or it's off. And I always, I always equate it to having a, instead of having a gas pedal in your car, it's like having a toggle switch. Either it's all the way on or all the way off. And you wouldn't want a toggle switch in your car. So, okay. So hopefully that helps. I don't know that I need, I'll keep them around. Okay. Um, let's see here. I'm just gonna push this mouth in. <laughs> He's gonna look like a clown for a minute. Uh, the 8k pressure over the 4k no that's not noticeable it's not it's just it's just a reason to get you to buy another tablet in my opinion just get whatever tablet you can afford honestly that's enough just as long as it's a tablet Okay, let's turn on Sculptress Pro. I'm going to save this just to make sure. Da, da, da. All right, I'm going to name it. I'll pull this over here. I'm going to name it something. Um, remesh union just stitches things together without uh, rebuilding the entire mesh. So it's not going to read like Dynamesh will rebuild the entire mesh. Um, I'm going to be using Sculptress Pro here in a minute. So Sculptress Pro will not stitch your objects together. It will just add triangles. Okay, yeah, so that being said, you don't need an expensive tablet, you just need a tablet. So the best you can afford, you know, don't don't strap yourself too much. I usually turn off adaptive size so it's just the same size all the time and it's not bound to my brushes. I'll turn this down a little bit and try it. Uh, maybe a little bit more. So now it's up here and just adjust it a little more. That's better. Let's make, turn the strength up on this smooth. And I'll just kind of smooth the transitions.
Yeah, it's it'll probably be a while before you kind of figure out who this character is, unless well, Mortar Mortar kind of figured it out. <laughs> Sculptress, um, Sculptress tessellates on the fly. Mm -hmm. That's a good good way to. So it adds a bunch of triangles and and well and squares too. So it's essentially doing this to the surface. And basically, what it why I like it is because I will, I will not run out of geometry as I'm using it. Whereas in Dynamesh, if, if you pulse, here I'll just show you an example, okay? If you're gonna use Dynamesh, um, basically if, if I used like a snake hook brush, okay, and I pulled this out, it's gonna stretch those polys, right? See that, whoop, stretches the polygons. And um, if, I, if I Dynamesh, let me find it. Da, 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 Dynamesh. Um, let's do like 300. Try that. By Dynamesh, you can see it, it rebuilds my entire mesh. Okay, it gets rid of everything. But if I'm using Sculptress Pro, let's turn on. Oh, I can't have topological on. Okay, so if I use Sculptress Pro and I pull this out, see it adds the geometry as I go and it's not rebuilding the entire mesh. Okay, so that's that's the big difference. Um, essentially, is I'm not going to run out of geometry as I as I work, and I'm not going to rebuild my entire mesh. So it'll keep the details and things that I use without rebuilding it. And the reason I went over the whole thing with with smooth is to kind of give me a base, like a so it's the resolution, the density of all the everything is the same. Okay. So now I can grab, say, my fill brush or my clay buildup brush. Say I want to do nostrils on the side here. I can just kind of build them up like this, and it's not going to, um, it's going to give me enough geometry. It's not going to stretch. It's pretty nice. And I can dig in for the nostrils. You know, but this, you can see that it's really, really easy to introduce um, lumps and bumps and the, the, the mesh is not as smooth, okay? Let me see. So you have to kind of be careful and you don't want to, you just, you just wanna be careful, that's all I'm saying, when you're doing this stuff. You wanna use smooth and keep it, keep it all smooth. And you do not, what I was gonna say is you do not want to turn dynamic subdivisions on when you have Sculptress Pro on. Those are like oil and water. You do not want those together, okay? Because they will not work together and they will cause slowdowns to your machine. Okay. Yeah, you can literally smooth it out into, out of existence for sure. And one thing to note, um, Snake Hook Brush will work with Sculptress Pro where the Move Brush will not. Um, when I say it will not, that just means the move brush is not going to generate new topology. It's just going to move it, you know, and it will cause stretching, but you can also always go over it again later with the smooth brush to smooth it back down. And I also turn Sculptress Pro off on my pinch brush because you don't want to pinch and try and generate topology at the same time because it's like, it's going against itself. You know, you don't want to generate topology. Okay, let me just kind of, this is a long, you got quite a long nostril, mister. Long in the nostril. <laughs> and the big thing is when, when I get his teeth in there, you'll kind of, he has a lot of teeth. You'll understand what's going on when I get the teeth. Can I have his mouth too wide? Secret of Santa Claus? It has something to do with some sort of holiday. <laughs> I 
And then when I, it's, it's, yeah, you'll see. <laughs> and I, I didn't pay attention to what I was doing with his throat and I scooped it in. So I'm going to have to pull this back out. Smooth this connection back here. Was that about oil and water? Yeah, you, I was just saying, don't turn, um, don't turn dynamic subdivisions on when you have Sculptress Pro on. That's bad news. Bad news bears right there. It'll just slow your system way down. Okay, let me see. I need to get these eyes working better. <laughs> hey, new here. Glad you could make it. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to the stream. All right, this will be interesting. Not stitch. See, my pinch brush, if I turn this on, the pinch brush is still actually pinching. It's not generating new topology. Okay. Do I know Blender? I use uh, I use Blender for for um, rendering sometimes. Okay, this is going to be interesting. Oh yeah, Daniel, I saw that. Thank you very much. Welcome to the course. If you guys don't know what Daniel's talking about, I, I teach an online course called the 3D Character Workshop. If you are interested in taking your models further. Got a little, got this weird lump on the top of his nose. Okay. This is a super interesting kind of a mouth smile line here. Oh, that's why Sculptors Pro is off. I'm like, why isn't it generating topology anymore? There we go. Just kind of use that as a marker. Thanks, Neil. Why only for render? Uh, I don't just use it for a render, but. And just so you know, this is, this is Pixelogic's live stream channel. So we just talk about ZBrush in these parts <laughs> for the most part. Yeah, before getting into a, a software debate. Looks like a, looks like a gummy. He's not, there's no gums. 
No worries. Yeah, just letting you know this is this is Pixelogic, the makers of ZBrush. This is their live stream channel. Hey, Gabriel, how's it going? Awesome, HD Max, welcome to the course. Hey, Donna. Yeah, this ear is going to be crazy. Okay. <laughs> hello, hello. And this cheek. He's got like no cheek, but he's got... Okay, let's try and build this up a little bit. Let's see if I can get it to work. Narrow, narrower nose, maybe. Hey, Saeed. Hello from India. How's it going? Also, if you want to see, um, if you want to see like student results from the course, that's the biggest thing, right? If ever, if you're ever going to buy something, you want to see like what other people have done with it. Um, we post, when I say we, I mean Donna, hey Donna. <laughs> um, we post student work on the 3D Character Workshop Instagram every day. So if you want to check that out, there you go. Thanks, Neil. Oh goodness, I just dropped my pen and it just went rolling off. Hold on a second, sorry. <laughs> oh goodness. Ah. Okay. Yeah, I'm just talking my pen, just like. <laughs> <sighs> Okay. Let's bend this a little bit more. Then um, this trim dynamic works really well for like scraping stuff out. So if I want to scrape down. Before building it up and then the, the clay buildup works good for building stuff up. But the thing with clay buildup is it's going to give you like hard edge lines. So you have to sm keep smoothing it down. But I really want to build his cheek up like this. Uh, 
Um, I forgot an art directly with expression. What are you asking? I'm sorry. Hey, Harry, how's it going? How to approach the details on a character from scratch. So just so you know, I'm looking at concept on another screen. I'm not just, I'm not making this up out of my head. I'm looking at a different concept. I just don't have it on my screen like I usually do because when I did the, the ZBrush Live scoped off, um, they, they had us put the concept on a different screen so no one could see what you were working on really. And um, I liked that a lot. So I thought I'd try it in my, during my stream too. So, um, I mean, you can, you can concept while you're, while you're sculpting live, but <laughs> Ryan bone. Oh, okay. Sweet. Something like that. This one's kind of tricky. It's got all these things coming together at the same point. <laughs> Build them up, smooth them down. Yep. See, this is what I like about Sculptors Pro is that you can put these um, these creases in here. And if I add something, like if I wanted to add eyelids later, I could do so without messing all of, without losing all of my creases and detail and stuff like that. Okay. What is this brush called? So this is another thing, um, Juan is, I give away all of my brushes for free if you want. See all these brushes down here along the bottom? All the ones that have these um, weird looking icons, these uh, silhouette icons or cross section icons. Um, these, are, these are brushes that I've dabbled with and tweaked. You can get all these brushes for free over on uh, my website at 3dcharacterworkshop.com. Just hop over there and just scroll down until you see the blue box. You can get them over there. Yeah, thanks, Neil. Okay. Got some super bushy eyebrows. And some of these super pointy teeth too. So and his eyes, I think. You know, I don't normally do this. I, I like to keep my character eyes spherical. But for this guy, I think I'm going to squish him. Because they're elongated. Um... Just a bit. And maybe in this direction too. It's got kind of beady eyes a little bit. Hello, Ias, how's it going? I don't know if I'm saying your name correctly, but hello, welcome to the stream. We got an artwork with an expression. So should I sculpt the expression directly? Oh, uh, okay, MD for, uh, no. So the only reason I'm sculpting this with an expression, normally you would sculpt it in a neutral expression if you're gonna animate it, okay? So if you're wanting to do, make it move later on, you want to not put an expression in there. But since this guy, I, I eventually want to 3D print him. Maybe, maybe I do. Um, I will I will sculpt the expression in his face as I work. So. Um, it depends on what you're trying to do if you want if you want to add the expression or not for this guy it's it's uh, the concept has him in an expression and I want it yeah I want to have it there 
Hopefully that helps. Makes sense. And I think I made his nose too big. Maybe like that. thin and pointy but trying to get it just right it's rather tricky it's kind of a goblinish nose now so I will use a mouse on occasion I'm not saying don't um, I only I only suggest not using a mouse if you're doing technical strokes so like say this eyebrow right here see this little eyebrow line i want to start soft and get with more pressure as i go and then feather it off again you can't really do that with a mouse right so that's what i'm talking about i'm not talking about never using a mouse i use a mouse all the time when i'm doing a retopology when i'm using the z modeler um it's just when i'm doing strokes like i'm doing right now it's so much easier if I have pen pressure so then I don't accidentally mess it up. I just wanted to clarify. No, it's fine. I just wanted to clarify that it's not like I never use my mouse. It's just not, not when I'm sculpting. <laughs> not when I'm doing strokes on the surface. I want to give him some teeth just so we kind of know what he's looking like. Space mouse like this. <laughs> I just picked this up. Just bought this the other day. I need to unplug it because it's done charging. But I'm waiting for. Um, so this is the mid level one. This isn't the one that they gave away at the ZBrush Summit. Um, nope, the new version to support it isn't out yet, but. I, there's other programs that do support that, and I just wanted to get one just so I'd make sure I have had it. Okay. Um, you use it with a tablet. It's not one or the other. It's... Um, you use it to move your model around in space and then you use your tablet to sculpt with. So it kind of replaces your mouse, not your tablet. Okay. Can I show, hey Graham, I'm, I'm uh, welcome to the stream by the way, but I'm keeping it a secret for, for now. Because just, just for sake of interest and fun. Just to, just to keep it, keep it like a, a mystery, I guess. <laughs> Okay, hold on a second. I gotta switch this music out. It's driving me crazy. Okay, there we go. That's better. Okay, um, let's do some teeth. Gotta shape his mouth a little better. <laughs> a friend of Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> Will you be my friend? It's just funny without teeth because he looks like a homeless person or something. Okay, let's see here. Um, 
this will be tricky, but we're going to try it. Hello from Brazil. There's one tooth. He's just going to have one tooth. <laughs> okay, let's split unmasked points. Arrow down. That's what I usually do when I add something new. And I'm going to do a Sculptress Pro on this guy and just stretch, stretch the heck out of it. Okay. Because it looks like this right now. As soon as I touch it with my Sculptress Pro, it's going to add some triangles. So I don't usually build stuff out this way, but it's kind of fun sometimes. Because you can. <laughs> Serious tooth decay. The soul survivor. Okay, and he's actually got pointy teeth. So we're gonna just give him some pointy teeth. And I'm not, I usually, I usually will do one tooth at a time, but in this instance, I'm wanting to try and just, just um, go crazy with it and add it with Sculptress Pro. Why not try it out? Let's see how easy or difficult that is. Sometimes I like, I usually use this stream to try new techniques. Almost like troll teeth from uh, World of Warcraft. They kind of go out. Uh, what's the most challenging model you worked on? Um, probably Boba Fett. I don't know if you can see him. He's right. Let's see. He's right there in the background. Yeah, Boba Fett. Yeah, snake hook is fun. Mate, I will show it later. Um, for now, I'm just wanting to keep people guessing for a minute. <laughs> and to keep, I'm, I'm also secretly trying to keep people from going, hey, it doesn't look like the concept. <laughs> so I can go, hey, I'm not done yet. Oh, the alt, alt snake hook to move along a surface. Yeah, that's cool. It's like uh, extruding on, on normals. Am I ready for the holidays? Not quite. Getting there, getting there. Okay, I'm going to take this a little smaller on the triangles. So just so you guys know, the unsubdivide, see this undivide ratio? That's how small the triangles are going to get when you smooth it. So when you use smooth, it will get smaller triangles if you turn that number down. Do a couple small ones right there. I'm going to sculpt a mando to go along with the child. I was thinking about it. I have thought about it. Um, I might. Yeah, it would be easier the second time around. Do you guys want to see? I can put it up in the camera if you want to see it. The, the Boba Fett, that is. I want to print out the child that I've made. I think it'd be fun to do Amando. I'm liking the series quite a bit. I think I want to um, make this, this tooth way more prominent. Hey, Lucky, um, what's undivide? Oh, it's just part of, uh, it's been there. It's just part of Sculptress Pro. 
So, so you can see Sculptus Pro up here. So the subdivide size is the how small the triangles are gonna, gonna go when you're using regular brushes. And the um, undivide ratio is how small the triangles are gonna go when you smooth. I don't know why they're separate, but they are. Okay, let's, how do I have these? I'm just gonna use inflate. And th these aren't really that detailed. I'm making them more detailed than they need to be. This center one's kind of like two teeth together. Comics, we're at 236 viewers right now. I think Ashley gets more than me, but I'm not sure. I don't know why, I just like to have fun. <laughs> Hope you guys are having fun. Thanks for joining me, by the way. I always appreciate it. I know there's a lot more things you could be doing right now than watching me sculpt but I really appreciate it. So thank you. All right. Let's get these a little sharper, shall we? And yes, Sculptus Pro is quite difficult to fight against the the warbles. And you also get some, sometimes you get these poles. See this little pole right here? See that little thing right there? Um, you can smooth it away sometimes like that. And if it doesn't smooth away, you can, you can just use something like polish over the top of it with Sculptus Pro turned on just polish over the top to get it to rebuild those faces and it will usually take care of the it'll usually take care of the holes oh thanks lucky i haven't seen you for a while hope you're doing well okay this guy will look a lot different when i get hair and horns <laughs> okay Take a little drink. I'm um, Barak. I did today. I don't usually, but I did today. I'll probably get, I'm probably going to smooth those gums out, but I did, I did on this one. Sometimes I do, sometimes not. I don't know. Yeah, I might just smooth out the gum line. Cause I want to keep it very stylized and clean. So it's just kind of a, a hint of the gums. So I'm keeping it smooth. Something like that. Okay. Let's do this, his bottom teeth. Anastasia. Hello. Okay. Let's do. Let's do the bottom teeth now. I, I liked doing that with the Sculptress Pro and Snake Hook. So I'm gonna do it again. Yeah, we're at 227. Usually we, we average around between um, 250 and 300. Two, well, I should say 200 and 300. No complaints there. All right. 
Teeth are kind of fun, or they can be. <laughs> Sometimes if I do it this way, it can seem kind of, um, for lack of a better term, melty. They look melty instead of solid. So when you do separate, like separate teeth, they end up looking more solid. But when you have everything melded together, it looks melted, like melty. I don't know how else to say it. <laughs> I need to make, I want to make these bottom teeth kind of overlap the top so they would when his mouth closed they would stick out up around his lips how would you animate it with big teeth you would um i would actually close the mouth with the teeth and make sure that the teeth were sticking you know how um some dogs, some of their teeth will hang out of their mouth or alligators and things like that. They will stick outside of their lips. I would make sure that it would actually functionally work before, you know, before retopologizing or making it into a model that I would animate. But this guy is just kind of posed for, I'm, I'm assuming 3D printing, so I'm not really caring too much at this point. Yeah, so from the side, that's, it kind of looks, have you seen those uh, uh, staple removers? You know, like the, the, the four that come together like that. It kind of reminds me of a staple remover. <laughs> kind of works like that. Okay. Let's, I'm just going to fill this with the color. And I'm actually going to give him, let me see if I can open. That's one thing is not, not having the, the concept. I can't eye drop off of it. I guess I can using the color thing. I've just never done it. <laughs> yeah, right, right, IR Sculptor. That's, that's what I do all the time. Oh, goodness. Here, let me move it up here. Yeah. You guys know how to eye drop a color from something that's not in ZBrush? You guys can tell me. Okay, while... While I wait, I'm, I'm gonna do some uh, some eyebrows on him. Uh, let's see. Let's maybe, yeah, maybe this one. Hey, Jorge, I'm good, thank you. No, see, okay, there's a way that I can sample a color that's not in ZBrush. I just haven't done it. Using, um, I think it's using the, the Z color thing, this thing, but I'm not sure. Hey, Neil, shush. <laughs> not supposed to see that. Um, well, there's a way to, to go sample off of there. I can't remember how. <laughs> so if any guys know, please let me know. I haven't used it in a long time and I forgot. Okay, let's go stroke. Yeah, there we go. This will be interesting.
XIR. <laughs> Okay, let's see. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna kind of sculpt this eyebrow in pieces. The Z color plugin. Yeah, Tara, isn't that what this is? The Z color plugin? I just don't know how to go sample a color from somewhere else. Click and drag from color swatch to where you want to sample. Oh, for like this? Ooh, there it is. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Awesome. That did it. Sweet. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, let me split and mass points. Yeah, this dude's purple. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Okay. Okay, let's do it again. Yeah, all of a sudden it takes on a whole new thing, doesn't it? When it's, okay. Dark purple, set color, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, so just to just to uh, tell you guys again, um, you basically, I have a, my concept off the screen. It's on another screen. And what I did is I selected this color, and if I drag, you can see it changes that color to whatever I'm hovering over, including something off of the screen. Like this, or this, this. Okay, so um, yeah, it's really cool. Very cool, okay, that's something, learn something new today. Then when you're done, you say set color, and then it will set it. Oh, chat's covering the color window, I'm sorry. Okay, can you see it now? Hey, John Quinn, how you doing, man? Yeah, so again, one more time. I'll, I, so there's two color swatches right here, representing these two, I suppose. And there's also the hex colors over here if you wanna select from them. But you basically s click here and then drag to a color, like so. And you can also drag within this, this screen here or here or or up here. Yeah, I can I can sample off of anywhere on my screen. Um, and it will go get it. So once you once you like it like this, then you just hit set color and it will take this color and make it live over here. So hopefully. Um will I make him full body? No. I'll just I'm just making a bust. Okay. So let me fill this, uh, fill these eyebrows with this color before I lose it, before I lose the color. Okay. I'm gonna duplicate this eyebrow. I turned Sculptress Pro off because I don't want it. Um, actually, I'm gonna redo, bring in something else. Maybe this one. <laughs> okay. A purple goblin? Kind of. Whoa, accidentally switched colors and filled this. There we go. <laughs> Pan yeah, it's Panthro. <laughs> this looks exactly like Panthro. You win.
All right. <laughs> yeah, listening to the guesses. Like I said, and I think Mortar got it right, so don't say it again, Mortar. But if you've watched any of the other streamers, Pixelogic streamers, you may have seen them sculpting something, and I'm doing my version of that. So that's a big hint for you. Okay, let's get um, the last bit. We can close this, I guess. I'm done with the colors for a minute. <laughs> yep. Jeru got it. It's a crazy pumpkin model, a broken pumpkin. I'm just going to finish it off with this sphere. Oh, you saw Spicer's version? Yep, and I think, I don't know who else has done one so far. All right, Donna, thanks. Come on, get in there. Go in there, there we go. Let's see. Trying to stretch this out and give it a shape so it kind of all flows together. Hey David, um, no, they were made with a, a Macon hairbrush, which you can get over on um, on uh, FunkyBunnies3D.com. I'm sure Neil will post that in there if you would, please. That's uh, a, a brush in combination between. Chris Whitaker and Benjamin Hale made that brush. I want the bottom to be nice and straight, so I'm going to put that down there. Inflate through. David, greetings from Germany. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Okay. So let's paint his eyes a little bit and see what happens. So I want to shape him a little better. Got some crazy eyes. Crazy eyes. I need to get these closer.
There we go. That's what I wanted. Hello everyone just joining. Welcome, welcome. There we go. All right. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Starting to starting to get there. Starting to get there. Thanks, Diros. His ears are a little too far forward. I'm gonna move him back. <laughs> that villain from the Archie comics, that's funny. He kind of does, doesn't he? It's funny because um I'm I'm good friends with the guy who draws for Archie now. His name is Bill Galvin. Whoops. He's actually a student in the course. And he loves to make um he loves to make reproduction, well, his own design kind of, but reproductions of um older cartoon characters like uh, Underdog and Pink Panther and stuff like that and print them out just as a hobby. Pretty cool. That's better. So that, I'm sure that stretched some stuff out. So I can just turn on Sculptress Pro and rebuild this area. All right. Ugh. Thanks, Neil. Yep, if you've been uh, holding off or wondering if you should get the 3D Character Workshop, it's it's gonna be going on sale really soon. So keep an eye out for that. Okay. Now this will be interesting. I'm gonna turn Sculptress Pro. Whoops. Just gonna add some uh, resolution to this because I'm gonna paint it. The denser the resolution of your Sculptress Pro, the, the better your color is going to be because there's more points. Okay. Oh. <clears throat> And he's got some detail around his eyes. But I don't, there's, it's like there's not enough room in there to put it though. It's like a bunch of lines around it. Maybe not that one. There we go. Uh, what 3D printer do I use? Um, I use uh, Form 2, Form Labs from Form Labs. Uh, this brush is my my detail brush. It's a version, 
it's based off of the Damien standard brush, but it's a, it's a tad bit smoother. But it started as a Damien standard brush. Um, am I going to be doing, I don't know if I'll retopologize this guy or not. We'll have to see. Okay. Let me do that super cool color grabby thing again with Z color. Grab. This is just a super dark purple around his eyes. Okay. Turn Sculptress Pro off. You don't really... You don't necessarily want to paint with Sculptress Pro on. You can, but it's not always a good idea. I'll probably merge these eyebrows together and sculpt them so they're all one unit. Okay. Then, again. This kind of pinkish color, that looks cool in his eyes, huh? His eyes aren't pink, but <laughs> looks pretty cool. Anyway. Hey Kenny, um, if you have some digital painting experience, is it easy to learn ZBrush? It, um, it's easier, yes, for sure. Um, your art skills would and should transfer fairly simple, or not simple, fairly easily. They should. I'm not saying they will, but I, I've, I've had a lot of traditional painters, digital painters, and digital sculptors come into my course in ZBrush and actually learn it quite quickly as far as they get, as soon as they get past the technical hurdle that is ZBrush. Um, then, you know, art skills transfer, so. Because there's, there's two sides, there's two skills, two sets of skills involved in learning ZBrush. One of them is the art skill and one of them is the technical side of skills. And once it's fun, it's really fun to watch people that do have art experience because um, it's fun to watch them get past that technical hurdle. And once they realize how powerful ZBrush is, then they just kind of take off with it and make some incredible stuff. Okay. I don't know if I filled this with color. There we go. Okay, this will be the interesting bit. See if this works. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Oops, I'm on the eyebrows, not the eyes. There we go. Okay, I'm going to fill it, fill this with white first though. Maybe uh I wonder if I can grab this color right here. No. Like a light green. Okay. Yeah, something like that. There we go. Okay, and then I'm just going to fake some shadows on these teeth here. Go darker with this. 
Oh, come on. Um, Vlados, um, yes, but this is, uh, this is Pixelogic's channel, so we don't really talk about, um, other software too much. There we go. It's looking cool. All right. Now for the fun part. Um, not that that wasn't fun, but I have a design of for the character on a different screen. Um, I thought I'd try not showing my concept while I sculpt just so it's kind of a more of a surprise. Um, because that's what I did during the, the sculpt off. And it was, it was a lot of fun to have people kind of not be able to see what I was making until it was done. Okay. So let's see, I've been going for an hour and 19 minutes so far. We have another half an hour or so. Oops. Um, need my help. I use your brushes, but I don't know how to paint with it. Um, what, what exactly what are you having problems with? Like your the paint brushes aren't working, like these two paint brushes. Do I only read YouTube comments? No, I'm a complete beginner with ZBrush. Never used it. Do you have any tips on how I can get started? Um, just get started is I mean, that's kind of a sounds like a jerkish answer, I'm sorry, but like just get going, just get practicing, um, and just start uh trying to make stuff with it. And just testing, seeing how all the brushes work, getting comfortable with it. I equate uh, learning it to learning a musical instrument. So at first you wanna learn your like chords and scales and things like that, and then you can start learning songs. So just get used to like hiding and showing things and masking and stuff like that. Those are Those are the core skills that you need. Yep, ZBrush, uh, Pixelogic has their own Z classroom. You can do, you can learn there. You can also get um, ZBrush Core and ZBrush Core Mini. So ZBrush Core Mini is free, and it's just kind of a, a fun thing to play around with and get used to and see if you, you actually like sculpting. And ZBrush Core is kind of the next step. And then, um, and then you can go and buy the, you know, get the full version if you, if you want to, and you're comfortable enough. Okay. This nose is still bugging me. Let's get this volume down here. Hold on a second. I'm going to switch. Still need to pull these cheeks out.
Yeah, it's easy to get overwhelmed. Um, I would just start with some basic objects, just like spheres, you know, try to get them in there and try and move them around and see if you can scale them, make them larger and smaller and shape them. Yep, Pavlovich makes some really good videos on for beginners too. It's a good point. Okay, now I'm trying to figure out how I want to do these horns. Um, do I have any tips on how to build a network for works? Like, I guess I don't quite understand what you mean by that. Like how to network pe with people to get a job. Um, well, one of those is if is if you go to school. Uh, another one is if you actually can can get work into you know if you get your foot in the door, you can network with people that you work with. Um, network with people like I said at a school um, or at a, in an online course like my course or. Um, inside of a like a facebook group like ten thousand hours um on art station let's see uh and then going to expos like ctn or lightbox or you know there's a lot of people there okay i gotta figure out these horns here Um, what printer do I recommend for sculptors who are just starting to print? Um, I, I don't have a, a specific brand name, um, but I recommend an extrusion printer because they're cheaper. And they do a pretty good job without breaking the bank. Yep, if you want to, I do have an AnyCubic Photon right behind me right here. That's the cheapest resin printer that you can get. Resin is a lot better than ex extrusion. Um, but I'm sure a lot of people in chat, yeah, they have. But resin's the best. But if you're just, the, the key was, if you're just starting out and you want to try 3D printing and you don't want to spend a whole ton of money, then you can try an extrusion printer. Okay. I'm, you know what? I think I'm just going to try and just sculpt this like... Mm. Let me see what IMM brushes there are. Da, da, da. Should have went and downloaded one. <laughs> There's so many horns out there. I don't know if this has any. I don't think so. No. Uh, okay. They're, these are very specifically shaped horns, so. All right, take care. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out. Okay, I'm gonna try something. These aren't the shape of the horns, by the way. I'm just going to try and get the shape, the initial shape first, and then I'll bend them. Um, Vasil, you have to look at the copyright issue that's on the, the person who is selling it. So they, they usually will tell you what you can use it for or if you can't yeah they will tell you
if they say you can use it for commercial products or commercial productions and you can use it that way and usually they they say that you can but just check and make sure Okay, this might be tricky. And the, the pinch brush is difficult sometimes because it pulls everything in. How can I change a model's pose after I finish sculpting it? Um, you use the the T pose mesh right here, and T pose to sub T. Okay, let me uh, clip this. Hmm, I don't want to do that. That's too much. Okay. A Baba Yaga? I don't know what those are. <laughs> I oh Slavic folklore. Okay, maybe I honestly every week I just go and find a concept that I that I like and then sculpt it. Well, ask the person for permission. Typically, if I can find that person. The witch grandma flying in a cauldron. Oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> Fun. Okay, I'm going to try something with this. This doing horns like this is kind of new to me. Uh Christopher, because I wanted to um have a have it concave instead of flat, and I just wanted to just kind of barely push it in like that so i pushed it in just with the move brush to make it kind of concave up underneath there and it's going to kind of twist it's like a it's very much like a goat horn so it's kind of flat on the lower inside and then it peaks on this outside here as you can see whoops geez okay so what I'm going to do is add a subdivision level because I want more detail and then delete it. So I have more detail and then I'm going to try and do the, the cuts through the horn down the length of it before I bend it. So let's see if I can pull that off. Whoops, need to do mask lasso. Um, I don't know if this is gonna work or not because it's still too low of resolution. All right, take care. Thanks for hanging out. Maybe one more subdivision level. Try it again. Okay.
it's not the best i'll clean it up because it's making it's still making these jaggeds but that's okay I'm just trying to work smarter, not harder kind of a thing, but I don't know. I meant I might end up working harder. <laughs> um, I can't do edge loop because, well, I guess I could, but nah, it's fine. I'll just clean it up. It's a good suggestion though. Okay, I don't know if this will work or not. Um, why not subdivide more? Because I want to bend it. And the more detail you have, the less uh, of, a, of a good time I'll have when I'm bending it. It'll add more warbles and things. So you basically want to, um, yeah, you want to have it low resolution. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anastasia, that's funny. Okay. So we'll see if this is going to even work. I don't, I don't know. Let's make sure we save this as. Okay. Um, I, yeah, I, I sh probably should have because then I could Z remesh this. Maybe I will. You know what? Let's just hurry and do it up, up, up. So you can see what I'm, t what she's talking about. All right. Bum, 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 bum. Okay. So if I do, if I mask it like this, and then I do um, edge loop mask border, it'll give me a new poly group, like so, and it will edge loop that. And I could, um, I could then do, I could even do poly groups. I probably might try that too, because then I can um, overlap them into each other. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but I could pull this out now. Or I could extrude it. Um, but maybe what I'll do is... See, I don't know if this is going to work. Uh, let's try it. And then I could do, the, do this again. Edge loop mass border. And it just picks random colors, so. Yeah, with panel panel loop lines, I could I could use it with panel loop and split it. See, it's it is still jaggedy, and that's okay. It'll I, I, there's a way I can clean that up. Oh, I'll do one more on the end here. Okay, now what I can do is clear the mask and do, it's called um, Polish by Features. See if I roll that slider, what did I do? It'll clean it up. Do it again, and you can, you could find Polish by Features underneath the deformation menu right here polished by features and it will clean those jaggies right up yep so then if i want to get it lower resolution i can do a z remesher um let's turn this down to like a let's do 3000 z remesh it whoops i forgot to hit keep groups <laughs> i'm gonna have to do it again let's try it again keep groups z remesher there we go and we can half it. Let's go to half it. I really need to put the half it button in my user menu. Okay, that's not too bad, I suppose. Let's go 
I'm gonna undo that and just kind of polish my features again. So when I do that, it's, it's actually kind of creating the things I want in the horns anyway. So let's do by half again. Interesting, okay. Now, there is this thing called, um, let's see, edge loops, extrude edge loop. I want to do group loops. There's, there's the difference between group loops and panel loops. And I can do, let me just try one. Okay, and that's kind of what it does is it adds, it adds loops in between your groups. I'm, I'm rhyming way too much. Hit zero and see if it, no. Nope. Oh, it kind of cleaned it up though. That's weird. Just do one. Because it does have this polish. And so it will polish it as you add the loops. And the reason I want to add loops in there is so I can mask off this now and just grab it like I was trying to do before and pulling it up. But now see how much cleaner it is than it, than it was before. So, okay, now that I have this, I'm going to use the blend curve modifier and I'll I'll start to pull out everything after I bend it. But I do want to, um, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty nice. It gives you, but I want to make it a little bit more on the diet, on the angle, like so. Before I bend it, I'm trying to do as much as I can before I do the bend curve modifier because the bend curve modifier is kind of destructive. You can't go back after you've done it. I'm gonna just do the inside to match. I'll kind of make it bend inside there. Kind of even, not too even, but kind of even. You want it, you want there to be some chaos. Okay, now let's duplicate this in case we need to go back. Under the sub tool, duplicate and hide the original. Okay, and I want these way bigger. So let's get this down to the base. I wanna scale it from the inside. So if I put it here and I scale from here, it's gonna cross in the center when I make these bigger. So if you move the pivot point to closer to the center, now when I scale it, it's going to scale from there out and it's not going to cross over itself. Um, hey, Saeed, T-Pose is breaking the true shapes of the model. How do you do it? Um, it's, it's going to break it. And basically what you need to do is fix it at, as you pose it. So it's too, that's, that's quite a big question to um, address right now because I'm not posing to show you, but you're essentially going to break it. And so you have to, you have to fix it. Okay. I'm gonna aim that kind of, well, let's go. I'm just looking at the back. The back is kind of aiming straight up and down and the front is tapering and that's good. And I can measure to see how far back it's gonna go. See, I probably need it to go more than that. Let's try that. Okay, fingers crossed, here we go. Bend curve. Um, hmm. Okay, I'm gonna have to do one of, one of these. So I'm gonna turn off the, oh. Yeah, I'm gonna turn off sy symmetry and hide one of these. I don't wanna clip it, I wanna hide it. And delete it because I only want to bend one of these and I want it I want the bounding box to just surround the single horn not both of them together so let's try it again bend curve there we go 3d mentor hey I'm good thanks okay let's see 
for resolution. I change the axis so it's going down. See these these orange dots going down the axis? Those are the dots that I can manipulate as I do this. Why not Blender? Because this is Pixelogic ZBrush channel. And then what I'd like to do is just kind of keep things low. Resolution. And now I can uh, crank up the curve resolution. Not that much. And then just kind of start bending. And then what I want to do is, is twist it as well. So you can see, um, see it says squeeze, scale, and twist. So I can start to twist this. I'm trying to think of how I want to twist it. Maybe to the inside like this. Twist it like that as it goes around. So you can kind of get that twist as it's going through. And then again, if you want even more resolution, you just go back to this up here and turn up the resolution again, you'll get even more dots. And then you can refine it even more. Kind of get it. Okay, let's see. Like if this one's twisting a little too much, kind of bring it back. Oh, hey, Ryan, what's up, man? <laughs> huh. Also, maybe they should watch for stylized characters. Yeah, well, thanks, dude. I appreciate it. So I'm looking for a nice shape through there. Hey, what's up, Donald? <laughs> um, let's see. Quick question, do you know why my topology brush would be creating geometry flipped when I draw the eyebrow, reduce the brush to one and then tap on the surface? It seems to be the wrong way. Um, it's yeah, that's that doesn't make too much sense other than, you know, possibly the the geometry that you're drawing the topology on is flipped. So how you can check it is make sure this double is turned off. OK, because if it's turned on, you're not going to be able to see which direction your uh, your mesh is facing. And if it is facing the wrong way, it's really easy just to go down to display right here. Uh, where is it? Uh, where's display? Display properties. And just click on flip. And that will just flip it. And that's e it's easy enough to flip it the right way if it is wrong. So um, let's see. There we go. I want to pull this in a little bit more. I can also scale this up a little bit if I want. Um, holding shift. Oh, is there a trick when using gizmo deformers to adjust the numerical values in a more precise manner? Yeah, holding shift. Thank you. It's hard to see your name. What is it? Dr. something? Dr. Depresso. Nice. <laughs> Luis, hola. How's it going? Um, I use the Y key for transpose to bend things, but that seems to work better. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, or the transpose line. It, yeah, this, this gives you way more options. Pull this in, just give it a little more of a bend. 
taking this out. And that, my friends, is how you get a complex horn. Complexy, twisty, crazy horn. So I've been doing for some reason, it happens every time when I solo it's always to the backside, then I hit double, I have to flip. Yeah, that's weird. But that's that should be how you can fix it though. So hopefully that helps. This is twisting a little too fast right here. And these kinks, if it does have a kink that you can't work out right now, you can always work it out after the fact, after you apply it. Okay. So now, let's, uh, I'm, I'm happy with that. And so you go down this gear and you say accept and that that's uh now i'm done with it so there we go and i can mirror it now just by going mirror and weld whoops i need to be on so just so you know if you do mirror and weld and it does this that just means you have local symmetry turned on and you need to turn on world sym symmetry which is essentially turning it off okay so see this local symmetry right here turn it off then do a mirror and weld and there you go now we have some cool horns do you have any tips for when this 2d design is so graphical that the skull is almost flat shape than the face you just kind of it kind of sits on so yes eric sometimes um 2d gets pushed so much um that you would just kind of have to compensate. You have to figure it out what it should look like in 3D or what you would think it would look like in 3D, but still pay homage to the original concept. Okay. Um, if I only learned how to draw so that I could sculpt because I want to become a modeler, should I drop drawing and dedicate all my time to modeling? I ask because I only have a couple hours free a day and I want to become a full-time modeler. If you want to model, I would say model. If you want to draw, I would say draw. I know that sounds like an, an idiot answer, but um, uh, I used to draw all the time when I was a kid, like all the time, draw, paint, all that kind of stuff. And I kind of let my skills wane a little bit. Oops, let me turn on symmetry, forgot. Um, and, you know, my drawing skills have, have suffered because of it, but my sculpting skills have gotten better of course because whatever you decide to practice um drawing now that being said drawing will help your sculpting skills and painting will help your sculpting skills it's all art it's all related so it's not going to hurt but like i said if you're if you're wanting to be a sculptor i would say sculpt Can you put a hole in geometry without, or put a hole in your model without breaking topology? You can with live booleans, but eventually it's going to break. If you want it to make it real, it's going to break the topology at some point because you have to, you have to end up modeling it in, right? So if you want it to become a permanent part of your model, that's looking cool. Drawing will help you become a better 3D artist. I don't find sculpting helps me become a better 2D artist. 3D mentor, I kind of have to argue against that. Um, sculpting has made me a much better draw, uh, 2D artist when I do do it because I know how the model turns. I know, I know how it kind of goes off of the edge in 3D in my head. Like I can think about it in my head better when I'm drawing. So, um, but like I said, it's relative. It, both of them help each other. So you can't really go wrong drawing or sculpting it's they're both going to help each other but everybody has their own experiences you know
<laughs> Evil Dobby. Nice. There you go. Ryan. Yep. Improved understanding of volume. That's the that's the fancy way of saying it. <laughs> yep. Everything's transferable. Composition, lighting, all that stuff. It works in both instances. And I'm just masking off each of these sections. Thanks, Anastasia, for reminding me of, of uh, group or edge loop mask border. <laughs> if that was, that was you, right, Anastasia? You said that. Nice. Okay, that's working out. All right. Thanks very much. Now, this one I do, I think I want one more row up here. So on this one, since I don't have a group or an edge loop, I'm gonna have to make one. I'm gonna have to just kind of nudge these edge loops around. I'm looking for one that kind of turns all the way down. Um, okay, now if you hold down, oh, it's we got a we got a ring. <laughs> Okay, I'm just gonna have to hide it by hand. So this is an instance where I'll turn on double so I can see what's happening here. And I do wanna hide these guys right here. Okay, that'll work, I think. Even though it doesn't continue down here, but that's inside the head, so I don't care too much. I just wanna mask this off and just kinda raise it. it. Won't be as clean as the other ones, but it will give me another, another edge loop. I actually wanna push this down instead of pull that up. There we go, just to give enough of a hint of one more right there. Okay. And then I kind of want these to point going down the horn so they have kind of a, yeah, kind of a point. Hey Brandon, yes, um, it will be posted on Pixelogic's YouTube ch channel if you want to see it later on. Okay, now let's move these back here and turn them. There we go. Dr. Depresso, I would say every time. <laughs> he always gets stuck on the shrubbery. 
back, my horns. <laughs> Stuck again. He sounds like Skeletor, apparently. Okay, now, let's see how much time we got. Oh, like two minutes. Um, the rest I need to do is the hair. So he has hair that's like all around his face. He's got a beard, full on beard and hair and hair like in a mohawk between his horns and all that stuff. What's the best me method to color your 3D prints? Um, I usually primer them with, with this, uh, it's kind of hard to get, but this Mr. Finishing Surfacer 1500 gray, this is what I use. I mean, you can really use any primer, but this is super fine primer that'll get down into the into the corners and stuff like that. Um, and it, it works really, really well. So prime it with that, and then I just paint it with acrylic colors, just like I would with any uh, like tabletop mini. And it works pretty well. Um, what, how do I mask? I just hold, with the gizmo showing, I just hold down control and tap on this, on the, Poly group like that. Okay. Is the primer available online? Um, I I bought this from Amazon, so yeah. But they keep they sell out, and then they'll get back in stock, and then sell out again. And okay, let me just paint a little bit more color on here. You are welcome. Thanks for hanging out with me today. And as as always, um, I do teach an online course. It's called the 3D Character Workshop if you're interested in leveling up your sculpting skills. Um, a lot of my students are here today. And I am going to be having a Black Friday sale sometime this week. So um, if you download my brushes, you will get on my mailing list. And I will be mentioning or telling you when that sale is available if you're interested. And yes, I do give away free brushes. So all these brushes and my user interface and my custom menu that you see me using popping up um if you see all of if you want any of that or all of it you can go grab it on my website 3dcharacterworkshop.com right here um and yeah it's i have there's a whole bunch of students in there oh yep and the ruler so it does come with the ruler to help you measure stuff all right so yes this is krampus this is my version of krampus well kind of my version my version of somebody else's concept version <laughs> um i like how he's turning out he's a lot of fun so let's turn on perspective and check it out he does have little cat eye uh pupils in here so anyway um yeah thanks everybody for hanging out with me today i really appreciate it and we will see you again next Monday. Um, I'm glad this, this stream went without a hitch last week. It, it failed. So, <laughs> um, oh, thanks. Thanks. I'm still working on them. I need to merge them together and, and make them better. But um, yeah, this guy, if, it, it depends on how far I want to take him. He's got a big furry Santa coat looking thing on too. So I don't know if I'll go that far, but it's, it's kind of fun. And he's holding a bundle of sticks on fire. So um all right yeah sorry <laughs> sorry lucy loose cycles i don't know how you say your name sorry about that but yep right at the end i, I stream for two hours every monday from um 11 a.m pacific time until 1 p.m pacific time so every monday same same and if you ever want to find any of the streamers when they're streaming you can always go to uh zbrush live Z just just do a search for zbrush live in google and this very first stream, you click on here and it will take you, come on, 
supposed to take you to a list of the streamers, list of the presenters, and the calendar when everybody's streaming. Um, so here's me streaming right now. But if you go to a uh, calendar, you can see what's happening, what's coming up. And if you go to presenters, see Pablo's coming up next. And then Thomas is tonight. Um, if you go to presenters, you can go to, uh, so here's me here. You can look at past broadcast and schedule. And you can see some of my work and all of my past live streams right here. There's a lot of them. There's over a hundred, so you can check them out. These are some of the characters I've done in my past live streams. You can check those out. So anyway, thank you so much, everybody. Thanks again, Neil, for posting all the links as usual. And thank you everybody for hanging out. All right, take care. Have a wonderful week, people. All right, see you. Bye.